Hello, ELIC 30 scholars. This is Michael, and I have some notes for you on citing sources when you use an internet page. I'm just going to read the page that I have printed out in front of you, which begins, Hello, ELIC 30 scholars. I want you to start thinking about citing internet sources correctly. It is more complicated than citing a book. And I want to give you an example of how MLA format works for citing a web page. For an essay we're working on in ELIC 30, many of you used a web page as your second source. And one of the wonderful drafts I read today included some very interesting and very common complications. I want to share them with you, and you might find the solutions helpful. If this is your paper, don't worry, I will keep your name anonymous. I'm scrolling to my next section here. The source was a website about autism, and that's fine. Good research. But internet sources are a little bit complicated to cite correctly according to MLA format. Also, they often don't include an author, which is a problem. This essay featured a quotation from the following source. King Digital, Autistic Tasmania Incorporated, this website, 2023. Let's start with the author. Who, what is King Digital? Is it a person? I followed the link and discovered that King Digital is merely an organization that hosts websites, and it has nothing to do with the information on the page. King Digital owns the computers, which house thousands of web pages, but it is not responsible for the, Im for the information published. So King Digital has to be omitted. Now what? Should the citation just begin with Autistic Tasmania? No, because happily, I discovered some important information. I found names of people. There are names and photos of eight people who lead this organization. Is one of them the author? Do I have to include all eight names? No and no. The first person listed is identified as the chairperson of the organization. That means she is the leader. Her name is Sky Mitchell. Interesting name. So the author of the website I will list as Mitchell Sky Chairperson et al. It was important that I include the notation chairperson in, uh, in parentheses, to clarify that while she is not necessarily the author of my quotation, she is the main person responsible for the content of the website. And the notation et al. communicates that several other people were also involved, in this case, the other seven people on the board. So my citation now looks like this. And this is revision number one. Mitchell Sky Chairperson et al. Period. Autistic Tasmania Incorporated. URL 2023. The next piece in the citation is Autistic Tasmania Incorporated. What is that? Is it the title of the article? When I followed the link, I found at the bottom the publisher Autism Tasmania Incorporated, not Autistic Tasmania Incorporated. I'm glad to have the publisher or the copyright owner. That is important information. However, I need to correct it in my citation like this. And here comes revision number two. Mitchell Sky, chairperson, 
at all. Autism, excuse me, Autism Tasmania Incorporated. Then the URL 2023. Bit three. But in a website, I need to include the title of the page, and that is not the same as the publisher. The title of this website is Autism Tasmania, similar to the name of the publisher, though not quite the same. But the website consists of several pages. Which page has the quotation? After searching various pages, I found the quotation on a page entitled Sensory Differences. Aha! I will include that in my citation, and I will put it in quotations with a comma, like a chapter from a book. And I will follow that with the title of the website in italics, like the title of a book. The order is name of the author, name of the chapter, name of the website, name of the publisher, date. So my citation now looks like this. Here comes revision number three. Mitchell Sky, chairperson at all. Sensory Differences, Autism Tasmania, Autism Tasmania Incorporated, 2003. Notice that I moved the date from the very end after the URL to in front of the URL, right after the publisher. As you know, section four here, my little video, as you know, websites are dynamic. That's a fancy way of saying they change from time to time, sometimes from day to day. Information you found on a web page a week ago might not be there next week, and you don't want to look unscholarly or careless by using information that someone else cannot find. So the way to protect yourself is to include the date you saw the information on the website. You will include that right after the publication date, like this. Here comes revision number four. It's coming. Here we are. Mitchell Sky, chairperson at all. Sensory differences. Autism Tasmania. Autism Tasmania Incorporated 2003. Web, period, 25 March 2023. That's the date that I accessed the website, found the information, and uh, that I'm making this video. Then finally, the URL at the very end. Are we done yet? Almost. Okay, section five. Almost done. Uh, the URL needs to be inside angled brackets. Also, since many research papers include clickable links, it might be very helpful to your reader if your URL can lead directly to the page from which you took your information or quotation, like this. Revision number five. Mitchell Sky, Chairperson et al. Sensory Differences, Autism Tasmania, period. Autism Tasmania Incorporated, 2003. Web, 25 March 2023. Then in angle brackets, here is my link. Notice that this URL is considerably longer than the URL uh, from re revision four, which is the original URL. That's because this revised URL goes directly to the page from which I drew my information. Notice also that the link, the link, the URL, is the very last piece and includes no punctuation. Okay, so no, uh, no periods, no commas. Uh, just dots for the uh, for 
that are required for the website slashes which are needed for the website but i'm not using any kind of quotation marks or periods finally since this citation is rather long i need to indent like this here comes revision number six see how i changed it if you look at revision number five there are no indentations at all but revision six uh, the very first line is not indented so it's kind of the opposite of a paragraph but each subsequent line is indented if you can uh, do that this is technically correct this is what you want it to look like this is your your ultimate goal now what wait as i look at this something's funny about the appearance of my url my citation looks funny because my word processor underlined part of it i wanted either all underlined or none underlined how can i get rid of the underline you need to select the underline portion and then select the menu item that reads remove link you might have to look around for that the exact location is different in various word processing programs the result will look like this here's our final version at last mitchell sky chairperson at all sensory differences autism tasmania autism tasmania incorporated 2003 web 25 march 2023 url wow citing a web page seems complicated yes it is so for our purposes don't worry too much if you make some mistakes professors tend to be forgiving with this especially since internet pages are inconsistent regarding the information they include do your best the essential bits are as follows name of a person if possible name of the page date of publication if possible otherwise nd for no date oh my mark is aimed the wrong direction it's still aimed the wrong direction oh well i'll have to fiddle with that um, date you accessed it which is important and finally the url at the very end That's all. I hope this has been helpful. Bye for now.